right, five minutes after 11 o'clock. I've lived in this town for a long time, Robin. Yes, you have. I've known that road called Fort King for a long time, Robin. <laughs> yes, you have. I only recently realized that Fort King is not just the name of a road. It's the name of a fort that used to be right there on mm-hmm. along Fort King. Yep. And now, after all these years, they are actually rebuilding Fort King, the fort, right? Yes, they or are. a replica of the Three fort. Three quarters scale, I think. We went uh, a few years ago on... Uh, fundraising thing we were doing and we were painting landscapes at different uh, state parks Mm -hmm. and one of the cool things about doing that is we came across not just the beautiful scenery but we also came across uh, battlefields yes we came across battlefields and you you would stand there and you look at this beautiful field and you it's the date battlefield the one i'm thinking of in Mm -hmm. in my mind so we look at this beautiful field and you say and you read the plaque, and it, and it explains the hundreds of men died here and then fought here. And mm-hmm. it's like, holy cow, really? Where else? Where else has this happened? Yeah. Well, I got news for you. The book America Invaded will give you the answer to some of those questions. Um, this is a state-by-state guide to fighting on American soil. It is written by our guest. He is Christopher Kelly. He wrote this with Stuart Laycock. And... He was, was he on during the uh, hurricane or no? I can't remember. Yeah, he, he was going to be in the studio, but then he couldn't because of the flight. So then we had him oh, on, the, yeah. on the phone and our phone lines were messing up so bad crappy. that it was all crackly and yeah. and bad. So yeah, we yeah, invited yeah. him to yeah. come back on again because his focus then would have been on Flight 93. Thank God you have a memory. Okay. Uh, Christopher Kelly, an historian. He worked in the TV industry for more than 20 years as a director and partner in local TV stations in Seattle, Washington and in Sacramento, California. He's an editor, a contributor to his great-grandfather's memoir and adventure in 1914 and his book is called America Invaded. Let's find out about this. Good morning, Christopher Kelly. Good morning, Larry and Robin. Great to be with you. Gosh, we missed an opportunity to have you in the studio. Gosh, that, mm-hmm. that damn Irma. I'm so sick of her. <laughs> sorry, it, was that, it was that damn Irma. I had to cancel. I'm sorry I had to cancel that last time. Yeah. And with a bunch of Florida visits that we were really excited to be making. And, you know, hopefully one of these days we'll make it back in person uh, to, to, and connect with you then that way. Too. What a time to visit Florida. Where, where, where are you right now? I'm calling you from Seattle, Washington, my uh, my hometown, my adopted hometown. Oh my uh, gosh! So, so yeah, I'm uh, in in Seattle at home. Actually, I'm, although I'm flying out tomorrow back to Houston to pick up the van and keep, keep driving on the tour. Um, with uh, we have a tour van that we've been going around the country with, and we were expecting to go to Florida, but we you know obviously couldn't. Uh, and uh, but you know maybe one of these days we'll we'll make it back there. Does do the Civil War battles uh, qualify as? America being invaded? Well, I mean, I think if you define invasion just as fighting in, then clearly, you know, that it, by that, you know, you know, bar, uh, it, it would, uh, I mean, I think that, you know, you had a lot of, of, obviously, a lot of states were touched by the, by the American Civil War, uh, and not just states in the South, but also, obviously, you know, Pennsylvania, you had, it was, you could say, was invaded during the Gettysburg Campaign, yeah. when Lee uh, had an army of over 70,000 crossing into Pennsylvania. Um, there were even, in the Civil War, there were even, you know, some unusual things where Vermont, uh, a group of Confederates operating out of Canada, invaded a town called St. Albans in, up in Vermont, and kind of shot up the town, robbed a few banks, and so, so you even had t- states like you know, fighting in, in places, uh, unlikely places like northern New England uh, yeah, during yeah. the Civil War. One place America was invaded in, in my lifetime was uh, Lower Manhattan. That, that whole thing that sure. happened on September 11th. And when you were coming in that day that we never got to see you, I remember thinking right. I wanted to ask you about some of that. Um, right. that, is that in the, that's in the book, correct? It, it is. We felt we had to include, you know, recent history as well. And so, like, in the Pennsylvania chapter, we talk about Flight 93, and, and, and of course, in New York chapter, we talk about about just what you alluded to, I mean, the Twin Towers and all of that. So, yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, we, I, we felt we couldn't get away from that. I mean, even in the Florida chapter, we mentioned the Pulse nightclub, um, you know, of course, that, that horror yeah, uh, yeah. from, from so, not long ago. So tell me a little bit about Na- Flight 93. We, we sort of kind of know what happened to the flights that hit the buildings, but what actually, I, I was never really clear what happened happened well maybe i am clear and i just think it's too simple of a story i've always been 
wondering if there wasn't more to that Flight 93 story. I, I think it's a fascinating story, and I, I did on this tour, I visited the site, I hadn't before I wrote this, but I visited the site of of Shanksville, uh, of where the plane went down, the Flight 93 Memorial, and I found it incredibly moving, uh, an incredibly moving place to, to visit. And it is, I mean, you talk about, you started by talking about battlefields, and even though the battle was fought up in the in the airspace rather than on the ground, I still think it, it is kind of, a, it's, a, it's a battlefield. I mean, aside from being a memorial, uh, it's also, a, you know, the site of a battle, and, and it has important lessons to teach us, just like uh, Gettysburg does, too, about what it is to be an American. I think um, because these people who boarded the plane, you know, obviously they weren't <clears throat> they weren't active duty soldiers, they weren't um, you know cops or air marshals, right, right. but they were kind of conscripted by fate to become citizen soldiers in yeah. this did, war against terrorism. Okay, help so. me remember the, the the chain of events. Did they know what was happening with the other planes? Sure. Okay, and they did, and and they, so they, did. they knew it, that it, this plane was heading to something, and they were going to do something to try to right. stop it. But they, they didn't force it to crash, though. What happened? How did it crash? Sure, it was Flight 93 was a United Flight 757 flying from Newark to San Francisco, uh, and yes, it was the latest departing flight of the four planes in question, and uh, via their air phones, the, the passengers did learn about, n not just about the Twin Towers, but also about, even about the attack on the Pentagon as well, the third attack, and it was, and I mean, there are a lot of things we, of course, will never know about the flight, but there are three things that we do know, I think, and one is that we know that they voted, uh, they took, you know, they decided to vote on what to do, two, we know that they took action, they, try, they rushed the cockpit and stormed the cockpit, and three, we know that their action saved countless lives. I mean, the plane was 20 minutes out from Washington, D.C., probably headed towards the Capitol building. And so, uh, so I think their, act and their actions, you know, did ultimately, of course, the plane did go down. I mean, you had four hijackers in the yeah, plane yeah. at the time, and, um, and everybody was, of course, instantly killed. But, uh, but, the, uh, but I mean, I think that they were kind of citizen soul. There's a continuity in yeah, American yeah. history from the guys at Lexington, from, you know, John Parker at Lexington with the Massachusetts militia in 1775. Uh, you know, he was worried about the, the tyranny of George III, and these, you know, um, members of Flight 93, which was a very diverse lot, by the way. I mean, you had gay and straight and black and white and men and female and younger and older and all the rest, that they all came together to with this, you know, one idea of trying to do something. To, right, you right, know, right. You know, not it, die on their knees, but die on their feet, so to speak. Yeah, in the movie, um, uh, uh, Air Force One, I think it was, uh, mm -hmm. the, the Harris, what was it called? Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford movie. Was the president. Mm -hmm. there, there was, I know it's just a movie, but there was a scene where there are, all the captives are held in one room, and, and, yeah. the, and the bad guys come in with their one machine gun or whatever they had, and and then they would leave the room. And I, I I remember saying to Robin at the time, I said, why don't they just all vote to attack this guy? Just tell the women, get to the back, and all the men jump on him. Some of them will get killed, but ultimately they will win. And it right. sounds like that's what they did in Flight 93, except for the fact that it ended up crashing. But I'm guessing they were hoping to somehow get in touch with a, a flight tower somewhere and, and be talked into, a, I don't know, if you could even do that, but... I, I think that's probably what the hope was. Right. Oh, sure. They were, of course, they were hoping to to survive. I'm sure they were. I mean, and but the uh, and to you know hopefully overpower the and they they also probably discussed the fact there was a one member of the of the of the passengers who worked for flight safety. So there was theoretically somebody on the in the passenger thing who could have piloted the plane because at that point the regular pilots had uh, had almost certainly been killed. So. Gosh. Um, so, so yes. So, and they were aware of this violence on the plane, and of course, they were aware from their uh, air phones of what had had been going on. Uh, and they were there. I mean, the calls that they placed. I mean, some of they they placed air phone calls to some of their relatives, and some of these are incredibly moving. I mean, there's one woman who calls to her relative to tells her that she loves her, but and then she starts giving the safety combination key to her uh, lock or safe. You know, try, in other words, trying to make it eat her, you know, she realizes she's going to most likely die, and she wants to make her passing easier for her, her loved ones, which is just incredibly selfless, I think. Wow, wow. So, so the, 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 um, 
What do you call the people who who deny what happened on September 11th? What do you call those? Uh, the truthers or whatever. Truthers, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. When when yeah. they say there were no airplane parts found in the field and they say that the cell phones didn't work, uh, I mean, they did. I mean, you had air phones, not cell phones, but air phones, right? There were these air phones, and they have these recorded messages. They play them back at the Flight 93 Memorial. Yeah. And, and so, you know, and I, you can probably find them on the Internet, too, I presume. But, uh, but yeah. So, uh, I mean... And everybody was, of course, instantly killed, and and the coroners did took a it took a long time, where they basically were able to identify, uh, you know, by the most you know tiny bits, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. the parts of people, but every passenger in the plane was was identified eventually, um, and uh, so. So yeah, I think I mean, and yes, it did. But it, it went basically straight. The the plane was was upside down essentially, and so when the uh, the cockpit was stormed and the whoever was at the at the controls pulled pulled up, so to speak, it went straight down yeah, uh, at yeah. around over five hundred miles an hour. Tell me uh, about uh, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> all right, all right. If I go to, if I go to St. Augustine, I see this big fort. Was there ever a battle actually fought there? There were a number of, of battles and sieges at, in St. Augustine between, you know, the Spanish, of course, were there, the English were there at the time, and then, of course, eventually the Americans. So, so yeah, there were, I mean, St. Augustine was, was definitely, you know, tussled over. Uh, Pensacola, there was a siege, the longest siege of the American Revolution was at Pensacola, um, in which was a siege between the Spanish and the, and the English, and you had... Uh, uh, the uh, Galvez, I forget his full name, but he was—he's the man that that Galveston was named after, uh, Bernardo Galvez, I believe, and he was the victor at uh, the siege of Pensacola, for example, um, during the American Revolution, because the Spanish joined the American side in the course of the American Revolution, and and supported uh, American uh, aims uh, in, in wow. the war. Wow. So, do you think this was? Um, I feel that this was a lot about the land also, as well as the people, the land oh, acquisition. The land acquisition, you mean in, in, Florida, in Florida? Yes, yes. So, well, well, sure, there was, there was uh, mm-hmm. yes, I'm sure, a, you know, a scramble. I mean, there's been fighting in, in every state, and, and, the, and the, the invasions, uh, these waves of invasions, and you had waves of invasions in Florida, for sure. Uh, but these have shaped our, our country in all kinds of ways and made, you know, di- different states you know, it, it different. I mean, like, a lot, for instance, Alaska is really different from New York in a lot of obvious ways. I mean, in this, in size, geography, and all of that. But it's also different in the sense that it was invaded differently. Like, uh, Alaska was invaded by the Russians, and that had an impact on, on, on Alaska, even though they sold it to the Americans in 1867. That, for instance, the Al- native Alaskans, most of them are Christian, but they're neither Catholic nor Protestant. They're actually Orthodox, which is a legacy of this Russian colonization. Wow, wow, I never knew that. There's, I mean, the book is just loaded with things. You know what we have a tendency to do? I'm, I'm just guessing I, I represent all the people who've ever picked up your book. <laughs> we go to the states we know, either Florida, sure. New York for me, maybe Wisconsin yeah. for Robin, and then we start yeah. to venture out once we've absorbed our, our the places we're most drawn to then we start to read right. about the other ones and you just had no I had no idea some of these things and and here's the funny thing when, if you ever are on a road trip and you see one of those pl- roadside plaques and you just kind of oh there it is you read it and you move on and have a sandwich right exactly you, sure, you just sure. take a, take an extra moment and realize what that is telling you what happened at that very spot you know it, right. it helped mold who we are today uh, That's right. The book is really uh, complete. I mean, you've done such a great job. Is there a plan for a second book? Uh, let's see. Well, the America Invaded is a follow-up to America Invades, or America Invades. Oh, that's right. About yeah, that's America right. going out uh, with a, a chapter on every country in the world that Americans have touched. I mean, I know you've done things on Samaraglis, for example, and with uh, so- uh, songwriting. And, and, I mean, that's something we talked about in America Invades and fighting Americans fighting in France at, at Samaraglis. Wow, you did your homework. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I like your, 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 your song. It's great. But, oh, my uh, gosh. So. Do you know, we, we got a call about that song from the stepdaughter uh-huh. of... Uh, 
D- John Martin. John Martin Steele. John Steele. Yes. John Steele. Okay. Yeah. Really. Yeah. We had a wow. we got a call from her, and she was so happy we did the song. And uh-huh. you know, it's a home it's a homegrown thing that we did. It's not a big sure. thing, but but it was it was nice that we were uh, that we actually touched somebody with it. You know. Well, I've I've been there, and I had pictures of of that uh, the mannequin on the church, and then you walk inside of the church, you see the uh, stained glass of the Virgin Mary surrounded by paratroopers. I mean, not something you see every day, but it is in Bemir Iglis, and uh, and I thought that was such an interesting image that I included that in the photography section of America Invade. So, but so yeah. Um, but that's right. Yes, mentioned, yes. You mentioned New York. You mentioned. I think you have a, a connection to New York too. Um, New York was invaded differently from say a lot. New York was invaded by the Dutch, right? And of course, the Dutch famously purchased uh, Manhattan for from the Indians for what sixty guilders or twenty four dollars or whatever. And so it was much more of a kind of a commercial invasion, uh, if you will. And then they they built a the Dutch built in Lower Manhattan a a wall to protect because they were worried about the English invading from Connecticut. Uh, and so they built this wall, and the legacy of that is is that's why we have Wall Street today. I mean, it didn't really work. It didn't that's right. Out. You know, mm-hmm. I, there's a, you know, I knew yeah. that when I was there. I was I was looking to show my son where that wall was because I remember learning about it, and I couldn't figure right. it out. I couldn't remember, but it is there. I mean, if I if I were to use my Google, I see. I need a better sure. phone. I need a <laughs> phone that can look up the stuff like that. Uh, when you were compiling uh, this book as opposed to America Invades. Uh, this had to have been emotional for you also because your ancestors were everywhere too and they, they fought yeah. and they came right. together for the greater good. Right. I dedicated the book to a couple of ancestors who fought and, and died. I mean, one was a teenage girl who was killed at Cherry Valley in upstate New York during the American Revolution uh, by... Uh, she was killed by by uh, Native Americans who had basically been paid by the British to attack uh, American patriots, uh, and and she and actually all of her family were killed. The only reason I'm you know talking to you today is that one of these family members was sent away to boarding school, and so he wasn't there at the time, but his entire family was wiped out, and so he, that was one member, and then another member was also from New York, who served during the Civil War and and died uh, in Tennessee in Nashville, Tennessee. Wow. Uh, so. So I, meant, so I mentioned, I dedicated the book to bo- the two, I mean, and I think, I mean, I think I'm pretty typical, in, and I don't think I'm anything exotic or unusual. I mean, that we all have, have family members who have probably connected to people who have fought uh, in our country at one That's time or the other. There, uh, the book is called America Invaded, a state-by-state guide to fighting on American soil. Christopher Kelly and Stuart Laycock wrote the book. I, I have a question for you about the Verrazano Narrows Bridge in New York, because in, sure. in, in the Pennsylvania chapter, you talk about the explorer Giovanni de Verrazano. Mm-hmm. Can you enlighten me? First of all, is the bridge named after him, and what does Narrows mean? Right. I think I think I also mentioned in the New Jersey chapter too. I think one of the things I think that's very appropriate that is that the almost maybe the one of the very first Europeans to ever spot the coast of what we call New Jersey uh, was mm-hmm. Verrazano, uh, and so that you had Italians arriving in New Jersey <laughs> very early on. Uh-huh. Uh, so so yeah, Verrazano was he was an Italian explorer. Uh, he you know worked for other people. There were a number of Italian explorers. Who kind of they were great sailors, and so I mean Columbus worked for the Spanish, Giovanni Caboto became John Cabot working for the English, and then Verrazano was uh, was also uh, you know another another Italian explorer. Wow, and, and narrows. What's the word narrows mean? The narrows. Uh, it's a, about a body of water. I'm not. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. So it's a physical exactly. description. Oh, oh. okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't yeah. know that. First, I don't know. Ex- you know, I don't know the geography. The, how what the term means. Exactly, but it's it's about about describing, you know, the characteristics of a certain body of water, I believe. And this is just so fascinating to read your writings and to see the photographs that you have in the book. That it makes everybody want. To, well, at least it made me to want to, you know, try to bring every kind of people together that I know so we can all have a a better life because history wouldn't be history if uh, people weren't coming together. 
Right. Well, I like the way that you talked about reading that you, you where you went to partic- you know you went to your home states and and I like the way that the book is set up so that you don't have to read it cover to cover. You can dip in to go to the places that you know concern you most, or you, and you can use it as a road book. I mean, if you have a book that you have in the car and as you're exploring right. the country, maybe you heard of traveling. Yes. You say, oh, I'm going to this state, and what is there in this that state that might be interesting for me to to check out? What does so the tourist information too the maps that are in the book they have uh, uh, s- some locations have like like a i guess an icon that looks like a fort and others have an icon that looks like a crossed swords and right. in, in wisconsin which is robin's home state mm-hmm. there are crossed swords over a place or, or an act or an event in history called the bad axe massacre that's just a yeah. great name. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good name. <laughs> what happened there? Uh, I, I, I think it was a conflict with, I'm pretty sure it was a conflict with Native American people in, in uh, Wisconsin that, uh, that took place, the bad acts of mass. Is, is that, and, yeah. and do the two, the, the crossed swords, what does that mean? It's a battlefield. It means it's some kind of battlefield. Oh, I mean, battlefield. There's some places okay. where you have... You know, and, and we don't conclude every battlefield that ever took place, and we couldn't be comprehensive. Like sure. Virginia, for instance, would just be loaded with almost nothing but battlefields. Uh, and you have things like Bull Run. You have two battle. battle uh, there were two battles of Bull Run, so you've got you know it. You know, battlefield twice, so to speak. I mean, in some places like that. So yeah, mm-hmm. so we mark battlefields. We mark forts, uh, and try to to make it uh, you know visually interesting for for readers. And what was one of our interesting things down here when we did go to Dade Battlefield, there was a section marked off that said Road to Fort King. So right. they just didn't have it as a uh, state park and focused on that. They actually extended out, and that was pretty interesting to us also. Right. Sure, sure. I mean, I grew up in, in California in, in, Sac- in Sacramento, and not far from us was Russian River. And, of course, is why did Russian River get called Russian River? And Well, there's, there's a park there called Fort Ross, which was a, fort, a Russian fort. Uh, and for like 30 years, from 1812 to 1842, you had a, a Russian presence in California. Hmm. And so, so the Russians weren't just up in Alaska. They also came down to as far as California, uh, and so you had, uh, you know, I mean, even the even waves of Russian invasions uh, in in various American states. This is a, a this is a well done book, Christopher. Thank you for taking time to be with us today. And I'm so sorry we didn't get to beat you. Uh, damn Irma, that's all I got to say. <laughs> uh, Christopher, I'm glad you recovered. I'm Kelly, glad you uh, recovered. Uh, yo, thank you for that. America Invaded. I have a copy. You're going to love this one. It came out in July, I think, and we did try to get them on in September, but it didn't happen. Call me if you want the copy that was sent to me. I did find it uh, for sale on uh, Amazon, so if you don't win it, you can go buy it. Do you have another website you want to direct us to in addition to uh, the Amazon site? Uh, readers can find it at americainvaded.com uh, as well as on Amazon and Kindle and so forth. americainvaded.com. Do you know what I, I... I don't have a young child anymore. My son is 31. But, uh, but what would be great if he was a child it would be to take the book... You know, teach him something about whatever is a, a, a place that we could drive to, and right. and then drive to it and actually see and touch the place. You know, that would be awesome. I think. You know, the history is all around us. I mean, and yeah. wherever you are in this country, I mean, you've you're you just scratch a little bit, and you're going to find some interesting history to to dig into if you like. And uh, that's what you said you did for Fort Ticonderoga. That one year you took Alex the, up I, to New York. That's right. Yeah, we yeah, well we, researched that. We ended up going to Quebec instead. Project. But <laughs> Fort Ty is amazing. It's an amazing place. Yeah. Uh, let me give the book away real quickly. Uh, good morning. You've got the book. Who's this? Hi, this is Linda. L- Linda, and you caught my ear because I went to Cherry Valley School, graduated to Cherry Valley, and there's so much history up there. Uh, it's amazing. Wow. Well, you got the book. It'll be waiting for you, Linda. Thank you, Larry. You're welcome. Uh, and Christopher, thank you so much for being on the air with us and for being uh, patient with us and understanding because of that stupid storm. <laughs> you know, we actually have problems without storms. I'm so glad we can blame it on something. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Great. Thank, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be right back. This is WOCA Ocala. <laughs> Fox 
Fox News Radio. I'm Chris Foster. The man who opened fire on a country music festival in Las Vegas, we're told, had at least 10 guns with platforms set up to fire from a hotel room window and cameras to spot first responders coming to get him. 